my dead cactus. Welcome back to the Bliss Feed. Today's video is going to be all about apps that I use for productivity. This is something that we talk a lot about in my productivity challenge. Yeah, by the time this video comes out, the challenge will be starting tomorrow. So don't forget to go in the description right now and sign up so that you don't forget uh, we're doing the Build Productive Habits in 30 Days email challenge starting tomorrow and I would love to have you. So anyways, one of the things that we talk a lot about in the challenge is small changes that you can make to your phone to make sure that it's less of a distraction and more of a useful tool in your life. So to kind of go along with that, today I'll be sharing a bunch of apps that I use for productivity. So I'll be talking about these apps one by one and we'll start with the ones that I use the most and then we'll work our way down from there. So the number one app that I use is definitely Now Then Pro. So this is a time tracking app, so that's the reason why I use it the most. Throughout the day, I'm constantly opening it up to just switch to whatever task I'm working on. Basically, time tracking is tracking what you do and how long it takes you to do it. That's time tracking in a nutshell. I did a big video on it a couple of weeks ago, I think, and I've also done a blog post on it. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll put the link to the video up there and then the link to the blog post in my description. I think it's an amazing tool for productivity because it really shows you how you spend your time and it forces you to be honest about the things that you're actually doing with your time. So this is the app that I like to use because I think doing it on paper is just a lot of work and then some people do it on a spreadsheet, but I think that's also a lot of work. I think this is the absolute easiest way that you can do it. And if you're interested in learning how to use this app, I did like a walkthrough in my other video. So again, you should check that out. My next app is this revolutionary app. It's so revolutionary that most smartphones actually come with it. You don't even have to download it. It's the clock app. This I use for the Pomodoro technique. Basically, it's where you set a timer for 25 minutes and you work and then you set a timer for five minutes and you take a little break. But I don't have one of those, so this will have to do. Personally, when I'm working, I like to put my phone not just off to the side, but literally out of sight. I don't know why, but just seeing my phone distracts me. So I would recommend doing that as well. Okay, third app is To Do. Now this app is not spelled T-O-D-O -O, like you would think. It is spelled T-E-U-X. D-E-U-X. Very fancy schmancy. So I actually just started using this app because if you follow along on my Instagram, I talked about how I was doing a little experiment to see how I would like digital planning because I've been a very loyal paper planner for a long time. I actually have tried digital planning and it just always failed for me. But then I found this new tool to do. I think it's still pronounced to do and I tried it again and I absolutely loved it because I think it fixed all of the problems that I previously had with digital planning. The thing that I didn't like most was that I couldn't see my entire week at a glance and you can do that with to-do. It's just a very simple take on digital planning and I think it mimics my paper planning system very well. It just has the added benefit of being super portable and fast, easy to use, and you can take your tasks and drag them around, which is something that I use a lot because I like to arrange my tasks in the order that I plan on doing them. So I've actually been using this a lot and you can quote me on this, I think I've converted to digital planning. This is a big step for me, guys. I've got a video coming out soon on my new planning system because even though I tried to keep the elements of my planning routine pretty much the same, some things had to change because obviously it's a lot different from working with paper. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, the next app is called, I think it's called Productive Habits. I mean, if it has productive in the name, you know it's a good productivity app. So this is basically a habit tracker. Uh, I used to have a paper habit tracker, you know, like where you get a grid, you write down your habits, and then every day you fill in a little box. And that was just a pain to do because you have to actually open up your planner, find a pen, and fill in the box every time that you do every little thing. Um, but with this, I can just very quickly see what I have left to do, and all I have to do to mark it as done is swipe. You get the satisfying little sound. Also, it keeps track of your streaks. So like for my morning routine, it says right below it that I have done 21 in a row. And that's just really motivating because you don't want to break your streak. Habit streaks before Snapchat streaks, kids. Okay, next up is Gmail. 
if you use Gmail, and honestly I feel like 90% of the world uses Gmail, I did not obtain this number by any scientific means, it's just something I pulled out. So I like to use the Gmail app because I think it looks a lot better than the Apple Mail app. I just deleted the Apple Mail app from my phone. It incorporates a lot of the features that I like on the web version into the app, so like you can apply labels, which is something I use religiously. Some people think it's weird that I literally have a label on every single email in my inbox, but um, they also have this cool feature where, I don't know how they do it, I guess they use robots that can read your emails. That's cool, that's not creepy. And they actually automatically suggest responses to emails that you've gotten. So let me find an example. So I got an email from someone confirming a meeting time. So email suggested that I respond with, great, thanks, or thank you, or okay, see you then. I don't use this a ton, but if you're the type of person who just gets tons of emails in your inbox and you need to send quick responses to them, this could be really useful for you. Okay, the next app is a photo editing app and I included this because it has really streamlined like the editing process for me. Okay, first of all, I used to use my DSLR camera for all of my Instagram pictures, but I stopped doing that I think once I got my new phone because this actually has a decent camera, but I still had the problem of having to import my pictures onto my computer because the only editing tool that worked for me was Lightroom. So I would have to import, edit on my computer, and then airdrop everything over. And that just took way too long. So then Adobe came out with this mobile Lightroom app and it is a lifesaver. It basically has all of the features you can find um, on the desktop version, but packed into your phone. Okay, so actually when I filmed this video, I was gonna tell you guys about how I have a reference photo, and then every time I wanna edit an Instagram photo, I copy all of the adjustments over. But apparently, I'm looking now, and Lightroom released a new feature two months ago that I literally found out about just now, where you can actually make presets and not have to go through that step. So that just makes the app even better. So yeah, I use Lightroom because it has so many different features. It's the only app I've been able to find where I can actually make all the little perfectionistic adjustments that I always want to make. The app is actually free. I know that some of the features are locked if you don't have a Creative Cloud subscription, but even if you don't, I know that a lot of it is still accessible, so if you like photography, Lightroom is for you. The next app is a budgeting app. I like to use the app mint.com and I made sure to show a part of it that didn't have any of my personal information on it. I'm saving up for my gap year right now and so it is really important to me that I know where my money is going. So this helps a lot with that. If you're like me and you're just a very basic user, you don't have to use all the fancy features that they have, but if you do want to make really like fancy budgets and things, you can also do that on this app. It really like fits to whatever kind of user you are. One of the features that I do use is the goal setting feature. So I I set a goal for how much I want to have saved up by the end of 2018. I forgot what year it was, okay? Don't judge me. I used to do all of this on paper, which was hard to remember to do, and it was kind of a mess, and you couldn't like see all of your data compiled into one place. So this is a lot better. Um, it connects right to your bank account, so it tracks all of your transactions automatically. Obviously not the cash ones that you have to input yourself, but it's also a nice way to be more mindful of what you're buying, so I don't really consider it a hassle. Okay, next. Next is Google Drive. Because Google Drive is my savior. I don't know how I would have gotten through now 12 years of school without Google Drive. So basically everything I do for school is on there and so it's very helpful to have it on my phone. I do also have Google Docs and Google Slides. If you're a student, you probably have had this happen to you when you only have the Google Drive app and you go and you see something that you need to edit and you try to edit it and it tells you, oh, you have to download the actual Google Docs app if you wanna edit things, not just see them. So I make sure to have those downloaded onto my phone even though I rarely use them because when I do need them, I usually need them very urgently because I'm about to turn something in for class. Next one is not really an app, but I think it's worth a mention. In my social apps folder, I have a bookmark to my blog. It just makes it really easy to access. I highly recommend doing this if you have a blog or website because when I'm making like social media posts on Instagram or Twitter and I need to get a link to a blog post, it's just right there. I can go copy it and then paste it into whatever I'm posting. Very easy. A few honorable mention apps. There's the Interval Timer app. It's mainly for workouts, but I think if you wanted to, you could use it to do the Pomodoro technique if you didn't want to set all of your timers manually. Then there's also the Sleep Cycles app, which is good for productivity because you can't be productive if you're sleepy. 
Evernote is awesome if you like to store information digitally. And then Google Calendar for obvious purposes for scheduling stuff. So yeah, those are the apps that I use to keep my phone a useful and productive tool and not just a distraction. Um, if you're interested in some of the things that I talked about in this video, like the Pomodoro technique, time tracking, um, some of the different habits that I have, you should definitely, definitely, definitely check out my productivity challenge, which again starts tomorrow. So don't be late. The latest you can sign up if you want to follow along is tomorrow and then you'll still get all the emails on time. But even if you sign up later, you'll still get all of the emails. You just won't get them like starting September 1st, which is fine. But I would really like to have you following along for the entire month of September with us so that we can all do it together. Again, the link is in the description. All you have to do is put in your email and I'll send you like an introductory, introductory, introductory email to confirm your subscription and tell you a little bit about the challenge. Uh, we'll get you all set up. So yeah, before I go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because I have a lot of exciting things coming. I actually just put together my content calendar for the next two months, so I feel very organized. Um, we're gonna have a morning routine video, school organization tips, the video that I talked about where I'll tell you about my digital planning routine. Lots of fun things coming, so don't miss out on that and make sure you follow along on social media as well. And I will see you, not tomorrow, next week. I'll see you next week. Bye.